an influential American man of the law, dedicated his life to defend Muslims, spends most of his time in the court's corridors. أن تخرج من ضيق الظلماء إلى النور أن تولد ثانية والماضي مغفور لحظة أن تشعر بالله في قلبك يقذف بهدى هذا ما لا يدركه وصف وشعور يا الله إني My name is uh, James Eric Meek. Um, I grew up in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. Our family was uh, all Christian. My grandfather, my grandparents, my aunts, uncles, everybody Christian. I grew up uh, believing uh, in Christianity, that Jesus uh, was my Savior, and that um, uh, I had a very um, powerful experience as uh, a young kid. I was probably seven, eight years old uh, when I attended uh, church um, one program. Uh, a visiting preacher came and he was uh, talking about uh, uh, hell uh, from a Christian perspective. So he had a movie that he played uh, for everyone there and it was a Hollywood production of what it would look like or feel like to be in hell. So I took the whole next day to go visit every kid in the neighborhood, every one of them and drag them to church. When I went to college and I had all the freedom in the world, I had money, nobody watching me, I thought that I would uh, do anything that I wanted to do, and I did. And uh, I would party, I would, uh, drink, I would do everything that looked fun. Well, I used that freedom to do the things I thought I had missed out on. I even lived with a drug dealer for a short period of time, right? So he would have marijuana or party drugs and at, at will. We became friends. In this period, Sheikh, the period of the school, the period of freedom, the exit from the family, the many of the boys wanted to have in this period. Did you feel happy? I became so disappointed that everything that looked fun really wasn't. I had an epiphany or a, a calling that I'm not enjoying this. I thought I would, you know, it, it sounds fun, but inside it was empty and I was miserable. Over the period of the summer, I really became very serious that I know better. I felt better, I went back to church, I started reading the Bible. For my entertainment, or for my satisfaction, I would drag all of my friends into a religious conversation. And one of the people that I meet my senior year, who we become friends, well, this person was a man named uh, Hamid Eid. Sheikh, you were young, and you were a young man to the church. You grew up a little bit, you became a young man, and I wanted to know about this time. Subhanallah. After uh, growing up, I, uh, you know, never heard anything about Islam until I got to college, and then we started hearing the words uh, during the Iran hostage crisis or something going on overseas made no sense until I met Mah uh, Ahmed, uh, Hamid Eid, uh, and uh, he told me what he believed. I, you know, what's a Muslim? What's Islam? I, you know, is it a cult? Is it, you know, just a few people? Is it 10, 20? How many of you are there? So no idea about Islam and Muslims until I met Hamidi. The biggest influence that Hamid had on me was 
the first thing was his manners. Um, he wasn't a practicing Muslim as far as the prayers and the fasting. That wasn't uh, something uh, that he uh, was fulfilling. But he was 100% Muslim, 100% Arab from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. And he had these manners that were very unique. So I decided that I wanted to, uh, to invite my new friend to become a Christian because it was so close already, this would be easy. So the next day or the next time we started talking, he'd stop me and say, wait a minute, he had gone to the mosque or somewhere, I don't know where he was going. So he started bringing me all this comparative religious dialogue that had taken place and a lot of the uh, material started coming from Ahmed Didat. When I started to study the history of the Bible so I could convince others that it was true, who may be skeptical. That was the first time I was introduced to the actual history of the Bible. دراستك لتاريخ الأناجيل هزت إيمانك بالمسيحية ما هو الشيء الذي لم تجد له إجابة؟ For me, I never questioned the authority until I wanted to prove to others. And as soon as I learned the authority of the Bible, it was not compelling, it was not persuasive. I turned my frustration towards my friend. And I asked him for uh, the Quran, but I didn't want to read it, I didn't want to compare it, I wanted to destroy it. I wanted to see if it had the same problems that I had in Christianity. Mm -hmm. I was convinced that the authenticity of the Quran was different than the authenticity of the Bible. It didn't make one word in the Quran true, but it was authentic. It is what Muhammad said, peace be upon him. The Bible, I did not have that assurance. <laughs> Then on this comparative religious dialogue I'm having with my Muslim friend who's the easiest to convert to a Christian, I'm being introduced to things I never thought of, never even crossed my mind. Muhammad in the Bible, never heard Muhammad's name mentioned in my life about anything, good or bad. I couldn't find any verses where Jesus said, hey, I'm God, you better worship me. So then I started to question, and in the long run, I, embraced, I decided that I was the confused Muslim and he was not the confused Christian and that Islam was everything I wanted Christianity to be. من خلال رحلتك في البحث عن الإسلام ما هي الآية التي كشفت لك الحقيقة وعرفتك على الله عز وجل؟ كل هو الله هو أحد الله هو الصامد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يقل له كفوا أحد I know that in the Quran Allah says, you know, glory be to Allah to have a son, you know, he only commands a thing, he says to it, be, and it is. But kulhu Allah hu ahad, Allah hu samad, lam yalad wa lam yulad, wa lam yakunnuhu kufu wa mahad. That is the most powerful verse you could share with a Christian. One of the verses of the Quran, or chapters of the Quran, uh, the elephant, or al-fil, it's easy to almost give up. But when I hear the surah of the elephant, al-fil, and I understand the message that it delivers, that this powerful man with a powerful army of elephants was marching on the city of Mecca to destroy the Kaaba, there was nothing the people at the Kaaba could do to stop the elephants. And when I reflect on just that one ayah, or one, one surah, it reminds me that it's not me that's going to make that difference, that everything is in the hands of Allah, all the outcome is in the hands of Allah, that I can take the stress of outcome away. MashaAllah, Shaykh Khalil, when you have the faith in your heart, what did you do? Alhamdulillah. When I felt the taste, the sweetness of Islam, mm. there's a feeling of calm, of peace, 
of assurance, of confidence, all mixed, that I'm home. And the feeling you have is, Alhamdulillah, I have it. Alhamdulillah, I don't want to lose it. I chose Islam and I actually went to the mosque and by myself and there was nobody there. It was between prayer times. So it was a small mosque. I got there, the door was locked. I sat down on the sidewalk, right on the curb, right there in front of the door. And it wasn't it didn't feel like very long, so it might have been 10, 15 minutes max. Somebody drove into the parking lot. And they parked their car, got out, had keys, and was walking up to me and said, can I help you? I said, yeah, I, uh, I want to be a Muslim. What do I have to do? So uh, he's like, okay, come in. So he invites me in. Ashadu la ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasulullah. As soon as I took my shahada, everybody got excited. They started to, you know, hug me and congratulate me. And they were just, they were more excited than I was. And what I was feeling was something had disappeared. A wall or a barrier that I had not noticed in my entire life between me and every other person on earth. That when I became Muslim, that wall vanished. It was... It was the most It was the most beautiful feeling that I ever had. And it wasn't because I was rich, it wasn't because I had all the things I wanted, it wasn't because you know, I you know, I feel like I'm in the right place as a Muslim, but there was some kind of connection of like a bond between a family you have a bond with your family stronger than you do with your community. وقرأه في قلب رقيق حتما ستهدى للطريق لا شك أنك تستطيع أحيانا إحنا كمسلمين ما نستشعر نعمة الأخوة اللي الله سبحانه وتعالى امتن علينا فيها وذكرنا فيها بالقرآن الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول وألف بين قلوبهم لو أنفقت ما في الأرض جميعا ما ألفت بين قلوبهم ولكن الله ألف بينهم هذا اللي استشعره اخونا خليل لحظه اسلامه في المسجد لما شاف علاقه المسلمين مع بعض والفتهم مع بعض شعر انه هو كان محروم من هذا اصلا احنا متى نستشعر هذه النعمه سبحان الله لو تسافر دوله غير مسلمه واللي حولك غير مسلمين وياتيك شخص فجاه يقول لك السلام عليكم هني تستشعر نعمه الاخوه في الاسلام دائما خلونا نستشعر هذه النعمه العظيمه I am currently uh, the executive director of a charity called the Muslim Legal Fund of America. MashaAllah, Tabarak Rahman, Sheikh Khalil, who is a member of the Muslim Legal Fund of America. What is the reason for this project, Sheikh? The Muslim Legal Fund is a charity that opened uh, after 9-11, the attack on the World Trade Centers. Um, there was a lot of fear, a lot of anger, a lot of anxiety, and a lot of ignorance about Islam and Muslims in America after 9-11. So the Muslim Legal Fund is a charity that was founded to collect money from Muslims all over the United States. And with the money that we collect, we spend the money on attorneys. We hire lawyers to defend Muslim rights in court. And for the last 15 years, the Muslim Legal Fund has hired the highest caliber attorneys in the United States. Uh, to make sure that the Muslim community is dealt with in a fair and uh, um, equal fashion. Subhanallah, Khuna Hamid, the Muttaat from Saudi Arabia to study, was the main reason for Islam, Khuna Khalil. And I always, when I hear about the Muttaatin 
وعددهم اللي اللي وصلوا له ما شاء الله احنا عندنا بس من الخليج مبتعثين في كل دول اوروبا وفي امريكا وغيرها تقريبا وصلوا 150 الف طالب ما شاء الله وطالبه لو كل واحد فيهم انا ما اقول 150 الف 15 الف طالب كان عنده هم الدعوه ويطبق قول النبي عليه الصلاه والسلام بلغوا عني ولو ايه كنا غيرنا حال كثير من الموجودين هني وغيرنا حالهم واخرجناهم من الظلمات الى نور الاسلام انا ما اقول روحوا ركبوا على المنابر والقوا الخطب ولكن انا اقول كل واحد تكون عنده نيه الدعوه ابتسامته باخلاقه بافكاركم الجميله اللي تدعون فيهم الناس هنا في هذه الدول الى الاسلام والى دين الله سبحانه وتعالى وهذه رساله لي من قلبي الى قلوبكم في كتاب الله قلبي صار حي وبحياتي صار لي ظل وفاي ويوم عادت نفسي وروحي ليه عادت ايامي واحلامي الي كل ما اتلوه او جيت اسمعه انسى الامي واحزاني معه من عرفت صارت ايامي هنا نور في الظلمه في الضيقه سعى كل ما اتلوه او جيت اسمعه انسى الامي واحزاني معه من عرفت صارت ايامي هنا نور في الظلمه